morning, Wayham. It is Wednesday, August 7th, and we have a great show here for you. The news headlines, the weather report, and today in history. This morning, learn about water safety from no other but our Gleason YMCA in Wayham. Also, find out where to eat, where are the best food places around town. And for a coffee segment, we're going to host AJ Penny, a local comedian. But first, I would like to take this moment to thank Not Your Average Antiques, an antique shop down Cranberry Highway in East Wareham for donating the props that you see in the morning show. So stay tuned because the weather and the news headlines are next. There are going to be thunderstorms today, isolated thunderstorms in the morning. Skies will become partly cloudy during the day. Storms may contain strong gusty winds, high today at 81 degrees and low at um, 71 degrees. Also, the wind will pick up to 20 miles per hour, so be extra careful out there. Those scattered thunderstorms will give way to tomorrow morning, then mainly cloudy later in the day with high at 82 and low at 69. And now to the news. There were a few news stories over the week, and here are the news headlines. All right, Wareham week had the following stories. That is, Wareham has tested positive for Eastern Equine encephalitis, uh, Eastern Inquan encephalitis, or also known as EEE. According to the Massachusetts Department of Health, EEE is a rare but serious illness spread by bite from infected mosquitoes. People who are less than 15 years old or more than 50 years old are at great risk. Plymouth County Mosquito Control will be spraying Wareham on Friday, August 9th. The department recommends avoiding mosquito bites by being aware of peak mosquito hours, which last from dusk to dawn. Also wear long sleeves, long pants and socks when outdoors, and wearing insect repellent. The department also recommends mosquito proofing their home by draining standing water and installing or repairing screens. Also, the Prudential Committee of Onset Fire District is requesting letters of interest by uh, participate, sorry, to participate on the bylaw committee. The duties entail meeting period periodically to review the bylaws of the Onset Fire District and suggest changes to the Prudential Committee. This position is open to all registered voters in the Onset Fire District. If you are interested, please respond by writing to, or well, by today, to Prudential Committee, PO Box 44 on Onset, or hand deliver the letter to 15 Sandpoint Road on Onset. And Wicked Local Wareham had this following report. An explosion of bridge jumping related calls primarily at Stone Bridge on Onset Avenue will now carry a fine of up to 200 and $50 to those who participate. According to Wareham Department of Natural Resources Facebook post, over the weekend there were numerous calls and complaints where jumpers came extremely close to boats passing under the bridge, and some of them actually did hit some boats. The department acknowledges that while they know that there has been a long time tradition, um, of people jumping off the bridge. There are rules and adopted bylaws that have been in place for quite some time now that does not allow this activity. So that's all for today's news headlines. Stay with us. We'll be back after this short break. And when we talk about toys special for children with autism, what do we mean by it? How are they different? 
So they're sensory based toys, mm. so they can, like the jewelry, they can chew on it. Okay. Um, and it's made for that. Or the lap pads, they're weighted, and the animals, they're weighted. And children with sensory, some, some of them, the weight calms them. Some of them need compression, some of them need weight, some of them need something cold. So it's a matter on finding what works for what kid. Now, you are not only a businesswoman, but you also, as I said, a mother of mm -hmm. two children with autism. I mean, tell me how effective these toys are. How diverse are they? They, they really are great. Um, okay. I don't think getting through meltdowns and things like that would be possible without these toys. It would def definitely be more overwhelming for parents without them. Mm. Um, like my son, when he has a meltdown, we have some muddy cold healers over there, and I put mine in the freezer. And when you put those on him, he calms down. And if that doesn't work, then he goes in his chair swing in his room and we swing him and then he starts laughing and he forgets, he refocuses and... So tell me about piercing it together. Where does that name come from? Well, the puzzle piece. Okay. Everybody creates a puzzle piece, with, I think it's a puzzle piece with autism and it, it pretty much is that. You're piecing your life together in different little pieces. You're always here, there and everywhere as a parent, so piecing it together. <laughs> and what should people understand about autism and parents with children with autism? Um, just because you know one child with autism doesn't mean you know autism. Every child is different. Um, and if you see someone having a meltdown, don't judge them because that's the biggest thing that parents get is judged. Why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? And every child's different, so. So it is hot out there. Well, not yesterday. Yesterday was kind of nice. But it is going to be very hot today. And a fun dip in the water seems as an ideal way to cool off. But according to World Health Organization, they warn that there may be danger awaiting in the waters. So always be prudent. So the Glacier YMCA has more information for us. With temperatures sizzling in the upper 90s, a day in the water could be the best remedy, but statistics prove otherwise. According to World Health Organization, even a second of destruction can turn into a tragic moment in a blink of an eye. Drowning is the third leading cause of unintentional death nationwide. It is also more prevalent among young children of 10 years old and younger. So the perfect place to learn about water safety is right here at the Gleason YMCA. Melissa Dyer, the Senior Program Director, is going to cover the do's and don'ts about water safety so you can focus on having fun this summer. Like you said, begs the question why. Mm. Typically it comes down to a lack of supervision. Although vigilance may reduce the likelihood of falling victim to drowning, it is shrewd not to be judgmental. Now, when we're talking about this topic, um, some people would think it's such a mundane topic. I mean, if somebody drowns, if it's their fault or your fault as a parent, it's not that easy, isn't it? No, it's not, because typically the people who end up drowning never envision going into the water in the first place. It's an accident of some kind. Most drownings aren't people who are actually swimming. It's a result of someone falling off of a jetty, somebody leaning over too far, falling in, someone getting nudged into the water unexpectedly. And in those cases, they can also be wearing clothing, which is not going to help their swimming abilities. Um, it also could be a matter of them being pulled out by a tide or a current, and they were at one point, in very shallow water, a wave perhaps knocked them down, mm -hmm. and then it swept them out to water that they were over their heads, so they didn't expect to not be able to touch the ground. So there are always unexpected situations. And unlike the popular misconception of the actual event, drowning is a silent experience. 
Um, if someone can actually splash for help, call for help, wave, indicate they're in distress, then that means that they're a distressed swimmer. They're not an actual drowning victim at that point. They're probably in trouble, they're fatigued, or um, they're not able to make it to safety on their own, but they're not in the first stage of drowning. Um, a true drowning victim can slip below the surface in as little as 10 to 20 seconds, and they often do it without making any noise because they're saving their breath. Another factor to consider. Contrary to popular belief, most drowning cases occur in shallow water where younger children and non-swimmers are the common victims. Now, now, some of these accidents, not only are they taking place in public, also mm -hmm. happening in people's homes. Yes, right. What, what is the best way to save a life? What should you do? What should parents do? Okay, so let's imagine that you have a backyard pool or you're at a friend's house who has a backyard pool. You've been invited to a party. Perhaps the party has alcohol or refreshments involved. At any time that that pool is open and people are swimming in it, someone should always have eyes on the pool. So that might be something that if you're hosting the party, either you hire someone to come and actually supervise your pool, guard your pool, or maybe you have a rotation of adults who become responsible throughout the evening mm -hmm. for actually being aware of what's happening in the pool. And in case of an incident, jumping in the water isn't always prudent doesn't matter what a great swimmer you are, if you have a panicked victim, it actually, and you get into the water with them, if they grab you, they place you at risk and you've gone from possibly one drowning victim to now two drowning victims. So safe ways of rescuing people from the side would be to lay yourself down on the deck, reach out with an arm, reach out with a towel, reach out with a noodle, reach out with something longer, ask that person to grab on, pull them to the side. If they're too far away and you have something that floats, that's near to hand, a beach ball, again, a noodle, a kickboard, a buoy of any mm -hmm. kind, throw it to the person who's a victim, ask them to hold on, and to stay afloat until you can provide further care to them. But in no instances should you ever get into the water if you can at all avoid it. So what is the best way to assure water safety around you? Supervision is the answer. When you are supervising anybody in any kind of a situation, especially if you're a parent of children, regardless of their age, your attention has to be on that person. And it can't be on them just briefly and then turn away. It can't be something where you're reading a book or looking at your cell phone screen or anything like that. You can't be distracted as the supervisor. Now, alcohol and other intoxicants, I mean, there are so many different ways that we can be impaired these days. All of that leads to slower reflexes, mm -hmm. um, also impairs judgment and logic. And for me, a matter of safety, you should have the best reflexes. You should be able to react to a situation both cognitively and physically as quickly as possible. And alcohol is going to impair that. Whether it's you responding to somebody in trouble and you being the supervisor and trying to help them, or whether it's you trying to save yourself, you're impaired, it's going to slow down everything. In addition to that, there should always be some form of communication near the pool. Not in the house, not many feet away, it should be right there on the pool deck. And with everyone's phones these days, you have an emergency cell phone with you at all mm -hmm. times. That allows you to call emergency services at the drop of a hat. Three words to remember, that is test, mark, and protect. These three tips could prevent a drowning. To learn more about water safety, you can visit your local YMCA to learn how you can protect yourself and your loved ones from water incidents. Reporting from the Gleason YMCA in Wareham, I am Queen Banda of WCTV. And yes, you can go to the Gleason YMCA to acquire more information, also take classes for you and your little ones so you can better protect yourselves. So now we are going to check out WCTV's first episode of Wareham Eats, a show about Wareham's best spots to eat in town. In this episode, we are going to meet Mary and Fernanda Pillai to explore Good Life Nutrition downtown Wareham.
Hello everyone and welcome to our new show Wareham Eats where we review the really awesome and amazing restaurants that we have here in Wareham, Massachusetts. Our first restaurant that we have come to today is Good Life Nutrition, which is a nutrition club that sells shakes that are nutritional for people to consume, but there's also a really strong community here as well. So we're here with owners Fernanda and Mary. I'm just gonna ask them a few questions about how they started Good Life Nutrition. How did you start this really creative business here? We both worked at a different nutrition club in Plymouth, so we met there. I worked there for four years, and Mary started about two years ago. So we wanted to move on and open one in Wareham. So Healthy Vibe was obviously our inspiration, and um, we do make meal replacement shakes. The meal replacement shakes are actually Herbalife. They've helped me a lot. It actually completely changed my life. That's why we're here at this nutrition club. Herbalife and Healthy Vibes were our inspiration to be able to move on and open up our own. Um, and Wareham is an amazing town to be in. So you've been open for about five months now, is that correct? Okay, awesome. What was your inspiration in creating this type of environment in this community and this space that you have here? We wanted a place that was gonna feel homey and comfortable for every walks of life to be able to walk through our door and just sit down and enjoy themselves. Not necessarily did they have to come in and have a shake, just come in and hang out with us. Everybody that works behind the bar here are super nice girls and we love to have a good time. It's just a great place for people to come in, hang out, have a shake, um, and feel good about yourself. Well, we took a chance in Wayham. We both from, I'm from Plymouth, um, Mary's from Plimpton. So we didn't know where we were walking into, but it's been great. It's been a really good experience. The Good Life Nutrition is focused on nutrition in your shakes but these are meal replacement shakes can you talk a little bit about your products that you have and just how you created them and what's inspired you how I got into the shakes was two years ago I found Healthy Vibes. I was actually looking to make new friends and I went on Meetup. When I went on Meetup, the first thing I saw was a weight loss challenge that they were having. I joined the weight loss challenge and in the 12 weeks I lost 45 pounds. Came in first place, fell in love with products, <laughs> nice. and then I decided to become a coach. So that's our inspiration was we wanted to be able to go and bring it to other communities, bring it to other people, mm. share our love for the products and help people, help people get to the same results that they want to be at. I actually was introduced to a nutrition club by my oldest daughter. She uh, invited me to a fit camp. Heard about an Herbalife, but I didn't know anything about a, um, a nutrition club. But we had a free fit camp that night. I loved the environment. I loved the community that they had. And I kept going and became a coach maybe six months into it. I made really good friends, and that's what inspired me to continue. I recently just um, quit my job that I had for 22 years. and doing this full time. This is a really amazing story. Thank you for sharing this. Do you want to talk a little bit about how do you create these meal replacement shakes? I'm really interested to know. And what's in it and what's the process? We have experience. We worked and you know, I worked four years in a nutrition club, but a lot of the shakes we just talk about it and we and our heads make the recipe together <laughs> and people love it. Um, sometimes they go on a board, but a lot of the times we just have special. We have Wednesday, we have a special. Sundays we'll have a special. So we'll keep changing around. Between all of us, the coaches, some of the coaches will come up with an idea and we'll just try it out. We'll make them. If we go out into town or whatnot and we see something out on a menu and we're like, oh my Ooh. God, that looks good. Yeah. Why don't we try and make that into a shake? Obviously not like lobster or scallops or anything, <laughs> but sweet things. What you get every time you come in, a shot of aloe. And what the aloe does, it helps with your hydration, helps with your digestion, helps absorb all the nutrients and everything into your body. The aloe is also a natural sweetener. So another thing you get is our energizing tea. That actually revs up your metabolism, burns 80 to 100 calories, and it gets your body ready to take in all the nutrients. So every customer, when they come in, they get those that shot, that aloe shot, and they get the tea as well. Yes, they do. So is there anything else that you want to mention about your community that you've built? I know that's important to you as community. We obviously, we welcome everybody in here and we want to build a bigger community. We like to have arts and crafts night. We have a medium coming in. We do our weight loss challenges. We are going to be doing fit camps out in the community. Um, so basically we just invite everybody to come in and just enjoy and we want to build more relationships in town, which we've already somewhat built that community in here. So it's been pretty awesome. It's been awesome. Very surprising that we didn't think we were gonna get that big, oh, wow. that quick. We're very grateful. I want to learn how you make these shakes. Yeah. 
watch Fernanda and Mary go right into it. I'm really excited for this segment. Awesome. So, all right. So basically, when, every time you come in, we're going to start you off with an aloe. Again, what the aloe does, it helps with your hydration, helps with your digestion, helps absorb all the water and all the nutrients into your body. We just do a little bit into a shot glass. Dilute aloe. Also start you off with um, our energizing tea, which our energizing tea tea uh, has 85 milligrams of caffeine, um, but it revs up your metabolism and it burns between 80 to 100 calories. And you can also get our tea ice or hot. It comes in many flavors, so it comes in raspberry, peach, lemon, original, or cinnamon. Next, we're gonna be doing the shake. So we start off with eight ounces of water. And then we use our Herbalife product. It's a soy, plant-based protein. In our shakes, there is 17 grams of protein. There's 21 vitamins and minerals. Basically, all the vitamins and minerals that you need for an entire day is in one shake. I'm not saying you don't eat for the rest of the day, but it does help you. So it's the soy protein. We have multiple flavors. With everything that's up on the board, we can make vanilla-based shakes, we can make a chocolate-based shake, and we add different things to it. We actually flavor our shakes with jello pudding mix and we play with those different kinds of flavors to make all the different shakes that we have on the board. Today we're making the blueberry lemon cheesecake. So it is a vanilla based shake and we use lemon pudding, cheesecake pudding, and then we use actually frozen um, blueberries so you get your extra antioxidants. Here we just use water as a convenience for us. Uh, still makes a really delicious shake and actually some of the Herbalife products that we put into it is considered like an angel substitute. One benefit of all of our shakes is that we can make them gluten free. We also have a dairy-free product, which is our Formula One Select, and that is a rice, um, pea, and quinoa um, protein. So if you are allergic to dairy or whatnot, it is a dairy-free shake option. Two. This is a meal replacement. All right, well, thank you so much for being here for our first Wareham Eats episode with Good Life Nutrition with Fernanda and Mary. It's been an amazing experience, and I can't wait to get a shake myself. Just come in, sit down, and join this community. We're both on, we're on Facebook, we're on Instagram, um, Good Life Nutrition. Come check us out, like us on Facebook. Hope to see you soon. We'll be getting a website soon. Be on the lookout for their website as well. Thank you so much, and tune in for next time And Wareham Eats. Well, thank you for being here with us this morning. We are broadcasting live from our WCTV studio in Wareham. This is Good Morning Wareham, your source for local news, weather report, traffic report, and more information. And now for a moment in history, let's take a look at where we were today in history. Well, on this day in political history, Theodore Roosevelt was nominated as the presidential candidate for the Bull Moose Party in 1912. With people unhappy with how Howard Taft's term was going, this party had a rather progressive stance. Teddy Roosevelt had already served as president from 1901 to 1909 and ran again, but ultimately lost to Woodrow Wilson in the election. Famously, Roosevelt was shot just before a campaign speech in October 1912. He went on to hold the speech before going to the hospital, exclaiming, it takes more than that to kill a bull moose. And today in sports history, 
Lynn Cox, um, brave the freezing waters of Bering Strait to make the first recorded swim from the United States to the Soviet Union. Lynn Cox swim in Korea began in New Hampshire, where she was just nine years old. And in 1987, with a team of physiologists monitoring her swim, Cox stayed in the water for two hours and 16 minutes before crossing the international dateline and continuing all way to the big deal med on the co coast of the Soviet Union, 2.7 miles up to the Bering Strait. Her swim is considered one of the most incredible cold water swims in history. And also today in 1998 at 10.30 a.m. local time, a massive truck bomb explodes outside the U.S. Embassy in Nairobi, Kenya. Minutes later, another truck bomb um, detonated outside the U.S. Embassy in Dar es Salaam, the capital of neighboring Tanzania. The duo terrorist attacks killed 224 people, including 12 Americans, and wounded more than 4,500 people. The United States accused Saudi exile Osama bin Laden, a proponent of international terrorism against America, for masterminding the bombings. For today's birthdays, we are saying a happy birthday to actress uh, Charlize Theron, born today in 1950, sorry, 1975 in Transvaal, South Africa. She turns 43 years old today. She's famous for movies such as Monster, Mad Max for a Road, and Prometheus. And happy birthday to everybody else celebrating their big day today. That is all I have for today in history segment. To learn more cool historical facts, you can visit them online under history.com. Stay with us. The coffee segment is next, but first, Stephen Miller highlights the library books. Welcome to our fourth installment of Checkout of the Week from the Wareham Free Library. This week, we're going to highlight three nonfiction books that are currently on the shelf right now. The first book I want to highlight is the New York Times bestseller, Accidental Presidents by Jared Cohen. Only eight men have succeeded the presidency when an incumbent died in office. Each one detailed how each changed history once they took office. They include John Tyler, Millard Fillmore, Andrew Johnson, Chester Allen Arthur, Teddy Roosevelt, Calvin Coolidge, Harry S. Truman, and Lyndon Johnson. If you ever wanted to know more about the office of, of the president, check out this very interesting book. Dropping in just in time for the 50th anniversary of the moon landing is the book American Moonshot by Douglas Brinkley. The book details the men and women who will fuel the birth of NASA and guided America through the Mercury, Gemini, and Apollo space programs. If you're into reliving this amazing moment in history or you want to know more about the space program, check out this book today. Lastly, I found another interesting and timely book on the shelf called The Fate of Food by Amanda Little. With threats of climate change, and the explosion of the world's population by mid-century. How are we going to feed 9 billion people over the coming decades? Little, a professor at Vanderbilt University, sets out to answer this question by visiting apple orchards in Wisconsin, remote controlled organic farms in Shanghai, and fish farms in Norway. Read about how the lessons of the past are helping shape of human ingenuity in the future. I wanted to close out this week's episode by announcing the dates for our upcoming book sale which is put on by the Friends of the Wareham Free Library to help benefit the library. Those dates are Monday, July 22nd, in a Friends-only sale from 5 to 7.30 p.m. Tuesday and Wednesday of the same week will go from 9 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. Thursday will run from 1 to 7.30 p.m. And on Saturday, July 27th, the times will be 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Thank you for joining us on this week's edition of Check Out of the Week from the Wareham Free Library.
fans, and welcome to the fourth episode of the Gateman Update Show. I'm your host, Griffin Butler. Today, we will recap this week's action of the final three of four games in the regular season. On July 29th, the Gateman took on division rivals Katuit in a face-off for second place in the Western Division. And then, in a home-and-home -home series from July 30th to the 31st, they faced the Bourne Braves to wrap up the regular season series. In their first game, the Gaiman played host to the Kettleers in a showdown to determine the standings in the Western Division. In the first inning, the Kettleers got into momentum when Nick Gonzalez of New Mexico State led off with a double, his league leading 11th. Joey Loperfito of Duke got on base with a hard hit single into left and Benjamin Sims tried to make a play but overthrew Jacob Teeter of Florida Southern at first base scoring a run on the error. The Gaiman then went 1-2-3 in the bottom of the first. In the third inning, Gonzalez again struck with a triple into right field, sending home Parker Chavers to make it 2-0 Kettleers. Gonzalez is known as the Gateman killer as he is 10 for 23 against them with two doubles, two triples, and a home run. Levi Prater got the start in the game and finished with a solid line of three innings pitched, allowing three hits with two runs with five strikeouts, even though Gonzalez was hitting so well. Tanner Bibby of Cal State Fullerton entered the game in the fourth inning, relieving Prater. With the help of a double play, Bibby completed a 1-2-3 inning to start. In the bottom of the fifth, the Gaiman would get the ball rolling. To start, both Matthew Rudick of San Diego State and Zach Mathis of Louisiana State led with back-to-back -back walks to have runners at second and at first. The debuting Pete Durke of Tennessee took advantage by hitting a triple into left field, sending home both base runners, tying the game at 2-2. The offense kept rolling on. After the triple, Braden Ward of Washington and Matt McLean of UCLA registered back-to-back -back walks themselves, loading up the bases with no outs. Nick Jones of Southern Georgia would walk Jacob Teeter and allow Durkay to score from third, making it 3-2 Gateman. The nightmare continued for Jones as he would throw a wild pitch, allowing for Ward to score from third, making the score 4-2. On a drop third strike, Jones threw a wild pitch, allowing McLean to score and put the Gateman up 5-2 in the inning. Teeter advanced to third with Adrian Del Castillo reaching first on the drop third strike. This would end the night for Jones as his final line was an inning pitched allowing six earned runs with four strikeouts. With the pitching change, Dallas Beaver of South Carolina Columbia came up to bat and delivered, hitting a sacrifice fly to extend the lead to 6-2. Bibby was solid himself, finishing with a line of three innings pitched allowing three hits with no earned runs and two strikeouts. Brandon Fott of Bellarmine took them on for the Gateman in the seventh inning. He had a great start to the inning by striking up two of the first three batters he faced. He then one-upped himself in the eighth inning, striking out the side. The Gateman would score one more time in the eighth inning on a series of strange events. Matt Rudick would get on base with a single. During Zach Mathis' at-bat, he would steal second on the throwing error by the catcher, advance to third, and then score on an error by the center fielder, making it 7-2 Gateman. Fott went on to complete his three-inning no-hitter in the ninth inning, retiring the side in order. Fott earned a three-inning save, finishing with a final line of three innings pitched, allowing no runs or hits with six strikeouts. With this final score, the game would take control of second place in the Western Division. My standout players for this game were Pete Durke, Levi Prater, Tanner Bibby, and Brandon Fott. Durke was solid in his debut game, finishing with a hit, going along with two RBIs to tie the game, in which it would lead to the game in scoring four more runs in the bottom of the fifth. He has a 273 batting average with three hits and three RBIs. His next two hits would come in the games against Bourne. Prater, Bibby, and Fott were all solid pitching three innings, giving up only two runs combined between all of them. Prater sports an excellent ERA of .91 to go along with 21 strikeouts through 19 and two-thirds innings pitched. Bibby has some solid numbers himself. He sports a 3.63 ERA with a 3-1 win-loss record in 17 and a third innings pitched. He also has 19 strikeouts. Fott also sports solid numbers, pitching to a 2.81 ERA through 32 innings pitched with 34 strikeouts. After this crucial win, the game went on to play a home-and-home -home series against the Bourne Braves, where in Game 1, the game would hit a wall, stopping their momentum from the game against Katuit. On June 30th, the Gaiman office picked up right where it left from the night before. Braden Ward of Washington advanced to first on an error and did what he did best, stealing second base. Jacob Teeter sent Ward home on a double into deep left. The Wareham lead didn't last long, as in the third inning, Xavier Warren of Central Michigan sent home the tying run on a double. Brendan Rivoli of Virginia hit a bloop single, sending home Warren, giving Ward a 2-1 lead. 
Mike and Tico smacked a double into the left in the fifth inning. It looked as though Ward would send him home on a hard hit single, but Antigua was tagged out at home. Jerry Weinstein made an argument for blocking the plate, but the call stood. Worm still had a chance in the fifth inning, trailing only 2-1, but this is where things fell apart for the game and Cole Stetzer of St. Joseph's. Five runs were scored on four hits. Rivoli and Jared Poland of Louisville hit RBI singles, and Stetzer walked in a run on a hit-by-pitch. Christopher Maloney of Jacksonville came in with the bases loaded and one out. Maloney walked in a run on the first batter he faced and allowed one more run on a sacrifice fly. Maloney struggled to settle into the game, allowing two more runs in the sixth inning. Warren hit an RBI triple and Rivoli sent him home on a sacrifice fly. Warren went 5 for 6 with 3 RBIs and Rivoli was 2 for 3 with 4 RBIs. Wareham showed some signs of life in the 7th inning. Chad Stevens and Jacob Teeter hit RBI singles. Wareham's 4th run was scored on a sacrifice fly. Bourne answered back with its 2nd 5 run inning of the game. This time, Quinn Cleary of Yale was the victim on the mound. 2 singles, a double, and 2 walks resulted in the runs being scored. Cleary couldn't complete the inning, posting a final light of two-thirds innings pitch with two hits, allowing five earned runs. One of the most surprising storylines of this game was Matthew Rudick of San Diego State making an appearance on the mound in the eighth inning. He has some experience playing as a pitcher in high school and in the fall at San Diego State. The one batter he faced was Warren, and he was the only Wareham pitcher to get him out. Teeter collected his third RBI of the game in the ninth inning. A second run in the inning was scored on a sacrifice fly, but it was too little too late as the Gatemen lost this game 14-6. As much trouble the Gatemen had in generating runs, there were still players who were solid at the plate and earned my players of the game. The honors go to Braden Ward, Jacob Teeter, and Mike Antico. All three players collected two hits for the Gatemen, but Ward and Teeter stood out as Ward scored three runs and Teeter collected three RBIs. For the season, Ward is batting 293 with 41 hits, registering 20 RBIs and 3 home runs. Teeter has a 301 batting average with 47 hits, a team leading 28 RBIs and 2 home runs. Antico for the season is batting 250, registering 27 hits, 7 RBIs and 1 home run. Following this loss, the Gamemen though were able to shift gears as they now played host to the Braves for Game 2. The Gamemen would get rolling in the bottom of the third with Trey Lipscomb of Tennessee making his debut getting on base with a single. He would steal second base and then advance to third on a pass ball during Mike Antico's at-bat. Antico took the walk and the game would have runners at third and first. Antico would steal second and then Braden Ward of Washington would advance to first with a walk loading the bases with one out. Jacob Teeter would then hit a sacrifice ground out in order to score Lipscomb from third to make the score 1-0 Gateman. Peter Kay though would fly out to end the inning. In the bottom of the fourth, the Gaiman added some insurance as Lipscomb would hit a two-run homer to put the Gaiman up 3-0. Antico would follow its suit, smacking a solo home run to put the Gaiman up 4-0. That would be all that was needed to close out this game. Cole Larson of Kansas got the start and was solid through the first three innings. After a leadoff single in the first inning, Larson sat down the next eight batters he faced in order. Larson had some help from his defense as three double plays were completed through the first four innings. Larson dominated, posting a final line of six innings pitched with four hits, allowing no earned runs with four strikeouts. New addition Joe Rock of Ohio relieved Larson. He was electric going two innings pitched, allowing no hits or runs with two strikeouts. Making his farewell appearance, Ben Leeper of Oklahoma came in to close out the game in the ninth inning. Leeper was officially deactivated on Wednesday and will be missed this postseason. This season, he served as the closer and was very effective, sporting a 3.60 ERA with 12 strikeouts in 10 innings pitched. For my stars of the game, they go to the debuting Trey Lipscomb, Mike Antico, Jacob Teeter, and Cole Larson. All four players were solid in this game as Lipscomb, Antico, and Teeter collected four RBIs total between the three of them, accounting for the four runs in the win over Bourne. Lipscomb was outstanding, going two for three with the two-run homer. Antico went one for two with the solo shot, and Teeter was one for four with the RBI ground out. Larson was solid in his third outing for this game as he finishes the season with a 4.82 ERA with six strikeouts in nine and a third innings pitched. Lipscomb has a 6.67 average with two hits, two RBIs, and the home run. Well, fans, that does it for this episode. The Gamemen are back in the postseason and should be more than ready to defend their current CCBL title. In their first series of the postseason, they will play host to the Katua Kettleweers for a three-game series. This one should be exciting, as both teams have three wins each, tying the series at 3-3 in the six games they have played. I expect this great offense and solid pitching to continue, carrying the team through the postseason.
Good luck to the Gatemen for the month of August as they make a run for the title to become 2019 champions. This is Griffin Butler signing off, and I hope you all have a great evening. Hello and welcome back. This is Good Morning Wareham and we are live from our WCTV studio at 505 Main Street. This is the coffee segment. With me is AJ Hapenny, right? Hey, uh, Penny. Hey, Penny. <laughs> it, it, do, it doesn't matter. I don't know what to do with my hands. <laughs> like Will Ferrell right here. Just, just, look, I, I, I don't know which camera do I look at this one, this one. The, number I, two. I have, I have no idea how's my hair. <laughs> Great. How am I looking? Your, your hair is amazing. Grew a lot since. <laughs> grew a lot since since two years. I, yeah, absolutely. I think pe most people would um, ask the same question oh, or I, would make the same comment. Okay, so I'm not supposed to look at that one. This one. Okay. <laughs> yes, that gotcha. one. Gotcha. So welcome back. The last time you and I met was two years ago. Mm -hmm. We were both fairly young. Yeah, and then like we just got old. We aged ten years. I know. With the stuff going on in this country, we we, we just we just aged. We just aged a I lot. I mean, you, you you look great. I I look, I look terrible. <laughs> I I I don't I don't know what happened. Like uh, I I turned into a Samoan genie since then. I, but I'm glad you met all the, my demands and in, in coming here. Yeah. I, I I demanded that there be a Jefferson Starship album behind me, which I do appreciate that because I said Jefferson Airplane, I'm gone, but Jefferson Starship. And then I also wanted a vintage picture from 1997 <laughs> behind me. And you did that. You did that? You did everything I asked. And I am just getting a load of this and, 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 ab and absolutely oh. loving it. This, this kid by uh, No Lifeguard on duty just saying, oh, well, I'm uber cool because I, I have no lifeguard. And he's wearing a Radio Shack shirt, too. Oh, well, you can tell all that. Yeah. It's, it's, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So clearly from 1997, just like, my dad bought me a beeper. Look at those sunglasses. Yeah, those sunglasses are ill. And Bob is still wearing those sunglasses to, to this day. That was Bob <laughs> 20 years ago, the producer. Well, um, so we're here to talk about you. You are our local comedian, mm -hmm. but you not only here and where I live here. locally. You so. live locally, mm -hmm. but you do your tours, your um, your act everywhere, right? I do. I was just in uh, I was just in Maine a couple weeks ago. Okay. It's a lot different than doing shows in Massachusetts. It's, I did a show in Boston, and they had a raffle to raise money for gun safety awareness. <laughs> and then I do a show in Maine, and they had a raffle for a gun. So. No, no, you're kidding. They have a raffle for a gun, and I won. Uh, uh, no. just, <laughs> but I had to, I had to defer because you can't take it over state lines. Oh. And, and, and plus, I don't have my license to carry. And plus, too much temptation for me. Uh, and so you, okay. So you, when you go to Maine, I take it there's some materials do cross the state lines, right? Um, they, they they don't they don't send me material. I kind of just just like research it a little, little bit mm -hmm. uh, before like uh, beforehand. So sometimes I'll arrive in the town maybe like two three hours early, just kind of collect uh, so some of the atmosphere and the stuff stuff going on. Okay. Um, I, I I ask about certain things, uh, politicians and, and and whatnot. That's generally how I kick off. Bernie Sanders, sure. right, is the big ticket there. Uh, Ber Bernie Sanders is big in Vermont, and then oh yes, sorry. I when I did shows in Vermont mm -hmm. in. in like uh, doing jokes about him, they, they were absolutely loving that. Even okay. that. That's their guy. Oh, all right, all right. But it's all in good fun. It's, okay. I just, so when I, it, I don't think I'm taking down Bernie. <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to um, people's attitudes, do you think Bostonians here in Massachusetts we tend to be more open-minded or? It depends on the area. Okay. Um, and open-minded is, is such a is, is such a general uh, phrase. As it depends on what you're open-minded towards. Okay. As um, Boston area, like 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 this, like the city, I feel that that's not necessarily like where I do best. Okay. Like um, why so? Uh, because I'm not necessarily woke. I do a lot of jokes about race. Oh, and, all right. Um, <laughs> And it's just like, well, you can't do stuff about Orientals. It's just like, well, you shouldn't call us Orientals. Uh, we're, we're, we're not rugs. <laughs> so, yeah. But, but then, uh, but if I do my act, like, outside the city, like, rural areas, like, 
like like an Elks Elks Club or mm -hmm. or, some, or some something like that. For some reason, I'm their king. I don't know why. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm trying to I'm trying to bridge like a little bit of that to do like a little more club stuff. But then mm -hmm. like uh, but then long sets like outside the city. I'm, I'm doing I'm doing pretty darn good. Yeah, and it's, and it's exciting. <laughs> Is it hard to stay clean? Um, you wouldn't think so. Actually, uh, actually, last time I performed in Wareham was actually at the uh, Onset Church. Onset Church. Yeah, and that was and that was on the third. Uh, they had an open mic, so I decided to stop by. Okay. And, and I was I take, and I was clean. clean. I you was were clean. clean. Yep. Okay. I did uh, I did fifteen minutes clean. I mean, uh, like obviously I kept it like PG Disney. I, I worst thing I said was poop. Oh. And okay. uh, but like I. I most of my material like isn't dirty anyway. It's just like when people like add a add a cuss or yeah. so something. I don't I don't think cusses mainly like improve my material okay. at all. Yeah. Um, but but then there's some comics that are just like oh well I can never do clean. I'm just like, Everybody start off clean. Yeah, I I hear some people who are just like every single every word in from their mouth. It's not necessary. Hurts. Okay. I mean, so, sometimes, uh, sometimes a cuss word can like emphasize on a joke, but you know, yeah. like every sentence, it's just just like you don't have to add that, and uh, just just like that kind of. And when people say you know, like three times a sentence, it's just, it's just like there's something like ding ding ding. I'm like, oh, stop. It's, uh, yeah, when you it, pick yes, it up. Yes, we know. It's <laughs> <laughs> oh, tell me further. No, I do not right. know. Um, so tell me about your journey so far. When did you start? Um, when did you have this passion to perform? Um, it, it started when I uh, started doing open mics mm -hmm. at, at the Black Spot in Hyannis. Um, it was run by uh, run by this guy named Micah, and um, and then that's that's when my passion kind of pushed forward. Mm -hmm. And then I, I was doing um, I was doing slam poetry at the time, and then I did a contest. Um, I didn't win that contest, but uh, so I was one of the funniest one. And eventually, I got to open for. Uh, uh, Jim Brewer at yeah. our college. Yes. Um, then this Bridgewater was Bridgewater State University. Yeah, yeah, Bridgewater State University. Well, university. <laughs> and that was in two, 2011, and that was in front of 900 people. Now, fast forward eight years later, I get to perform in Bridgewater again. Yes. In a nursing home. Okay. In front of nine people, and <laughs> one of them's holding their heart. I'm just like, oh, and this is on Monday too. Um, uh, so, so like, I'm um, like, yeah, I'm killing, but not in the way that I wanted to. Yeah. And then an hour, and then an hour later, I'm performing in what was formerly Bogarts, I think. Okay. And uh, and that was run by my buddy Troy, and that then that and that was actually a good show. It's it's nice to stop by a show with groupies. Um, I mean the old folks home, uh, <laughs> and uh, that, that that was a delight. Okay, that was a delight. So you have gone back. You recently went back to Bridgewater State University, right? Um, I'm gonna gonna be taking my masters. Um, oh, you're going as a, okay, masters in what? Yeah, I'm gonna take uh, my masters in uh, being president, and I plan on being the uh, being next president. A little bit of politics. <laughs> okay, uh, a little bit of politics. Yeah. I don't think they offer such a class. Yeah, yeah, um, I'm gonna make one. Okay. And I am going to run against the Rock in the 2030. 2030. And they're thinking like, okay, we got a. We, we we got we got a celebrity as our as our as our president. Yes. And like we got a TV personality. Now we want now we want the Rock. Want so, so I think it's going to trans transfer to that, and okay. I have to run for president against the Rock. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. So t tell me how how are you feeling this gig? Is it getting stronger? Do you like it to do it, or where are you at? Well, if if I didn't like it, I don't think I would st still still be doing it. Okay. Um, because it's definitely not for the money. Um, it's not for the money. <laughs> yeah. Even even though it is even though it is paying paying my rent. Wait, what is the dream? Is it a, a Netflix special? Uh, Pornhub special. I want to be the first one on that. No. Um. Yeah, Netflix special would be nice. Um. <laughs> a H. But like uh, my sh my short term. By the time I'm forty, I want to uh, I want to uh, uh, headline the Melody Tent. By the time I'm forty. By the time you're forty. Yeah, by the time I'm forty. How far along are we? Um, I got eight years to go. So, so I, I got. No, I you got don't have eight years to go. I got. You're thirty-two. Hmm. You're thirty-two. I'm thirty-two. No way. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. So they say black don't crack, but Asian, well, cracks less. Cracks less. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Do you, do you identify as Asian? 
Um, I, ident I identify as a spaceman from Mars, much okay. like much like much like Charlie Sheen. But, uh, my my mother is is full Filipino. My dad's part Irish. Yet I, I look like Quagmire was on the Telemundo channel. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I, I don't like, see just like, yeah, Asian just like, part of you. Mm -hmm. Not at all. Uh, well, like um, you tan well, but I don't. That's not. I I, 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 sh I, sh I should hope I, I tan well, but like I don't I don't I don't seem Asian at all, especially to uh, especially to police officers when I get pulled and over. You don't look Irish either. Oh uh, no. <laughs> I, I mean, I feel Irish uh, from below, but other than that, no, I'm not. <laughs> Very Irish. Well, except for the, uh, except for what they tell me at AA, uh, I'm not very Irish at all. Oh my god! I am the worst. Well, not Fahey bad, but I'm worse. So, what do you look for when you're performing? What is your target? Like, how do you prepare? How do you write? What's your thought process like? Well, well, much, well, much like I was saying um, with with prepping per town. Uh, more, more long term, um, I write how I, I, I'm, I'm a firm believer in, in less is more. Less uh, is have, more. Have you ever seen the movie Three Amigos? Three Amigos. Yeah. You know. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna have, have, have you try to remember. Uh, okay. Martin Short, um, che, che, Chevy Chase, and Steve Martin. There were there was one scene that they were selling, sending a telegram, but they didn't have enough money to send send a telegram. But it was okay. like okay, how, but we shorten it, and then that way you can afford to send this telegram. Okay. That that's that's how I try to write as 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 well. But like, unlike some, unlike some comics, I'm not gonna mention Mike Fahey's name. Hey, you, hey. you don't need two paragraphs to get to the punchline. You can you can just have like a line or two. So you're not a storyteller, right? I'm not. I'm not a big storyteller. Well, like ex you, except more towards the end. Okay, of, so you're just like one-liners, kind of quick thing. Just boom, 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 boom. Okay. You just like a, a, any advice for anyone starting. You want to get the quick laughs early on in your set, and then you can do like the longer storytelling stuff, like more more towards the end. But but it's hard to tell a story in five minutes. So so. But just, isn't there some comfort to telling a story? Therefore, you remember it easily. Oh sure. And people get to Abs know you more. A absolutely, but at that point, you're so much better at joke writing from writing the shorter stuff. Oh okay. That gotcha. you'll be able to mold and take out the fat of those stories, like to take out what's necessary. Well, okay, what do I need to keep in to make this interesting and have people on on the same page with me and understand? Who makes you laugh? Who makes what makes me laugh? Um, Not what who. Who? Uh, my mother. Your mother makes you laugh. Yes. Um, her ju just with her laugh entirely, uh, j just like still makes makes me cry to this day, and um, and and my and my dad and my father as well. Um, as he's just like trying out jokes because like I'll I'll tell a joke, it's getting laughs. I was like, oh, you can tell it this way, and I'm just like, well, no, that doesn't that doesn't work. That at, doesn't work <laughs> at, at, at all. But uh, like I'm not gonna go with my father because like not all comics and hit home runs. Yeah. It's just like, my dad's just trying out. He's just open micing jokes. Yeah. Like uh, in, in, in public. And then um, uh, as, as far as uh, comedians, Harlan Williams is one of my favorites uh, uh, growing up. Uh, Mark Norman is, is one of my favorites uh, mm -hmm. uh, right now. And um, like even though controversy, I, I still like Louis C.K. I, I still like. Oh, uh, okay. I, I still still like that stuff. He had a good show. Uh, yeah, he definitely. It got a little weird toward towards the end. It was not really as as much laughs. Yeah. So so I wasn't really enjoying it as much. But like uh, Lou, Louis in general, what he did was weird. It, that's the it's thing. It's definitely like, weird. You, you, his his act was one of those where conscientious. You're like, should I laugh? This sounds like a very serious matter. Oh, uh, yeah. You know, if I, am I laughing at him or I'm laughing with him? And yeah. Well, well, like that, that's, 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 that's also, that's also comedy in general. Like, uh, if, if you're going to bring your sadness out, you got to say it in a it way that it's, dark. that it's, that it's funny as, as well. Like you're feeling for him, but not to the point where like, I'm not going to laugh at well, what they're saying. speaking of sadness, I've seen other um, comedians, and they would use their um, shortcomings, mm -hmm. right, to so they can solicitate laughter. So somebody would make fun of oh, themselves. Oh, absolutely. So, do you find it hard for you to make fun of yourself, or what about you that you consider it, funny? It's uh, it 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 depends on the areas too. Like uh, when why did when I did the uh, church show. I didn't have a hard time have, uh, making fun of myself, but then 
Like I, I did a show in Cambridge where mm. I make fun of myself. Just like, oh, I feel so bad. Just like you're not gonna like the rest of my set. But, but what about you though? What would about you that people would consider it a vulnerable point? To um, ju ju just, uh, just generally uh, ra race in general, because, because like like you're saying, I I don't necessarily uh, look, look Asian. And so, so like uh, many, many, many races and um, and um, uh, folk, folks from other countries confuse me for them, mm. and then like any he confused you for them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Start to other like no, I'm not the kind of brown. Sorry, um, I, I don't. I don't know that language, or or I'll or I'll get pulled over constantly because yeah. they think I'm that kind of brown yeah. that, that that they're looking for. So. Um, luckily, I did escape the ice raids in um, in, in high ass. Okay. Um, I, I did get pulled over uh, like about like a week and a half ago, but like I, I threw him off because uh, I was playing the theme song from Friends and I'm just clapping along. I was just like, oh, this guy's definitely gotta be white. And then <laughs> sees, sees my license and my full name is Arthur John Hapen the Fourth, and just like I, I my my face says I clean pools, but my name says I own all those pools. So, so <laughs> but like that that that's that, that's how I got away with it. You okay. So, all right, so you, you could, yeah, your uh, racial background, mm. that's your vulnerable point. So you have an upcoming show. Yes. All right, tell us about your show. It's uh, Wareham Comedy Night. Do I, do I look at this one or yes. just look, 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 look at you? Uh, Wareham Comedy Night. It's going to be Saturday, October 5th. Tony V is headlining. Tickets are 20 bucks. They are going to be on sale Friday. And then uh, till September 5th. Like you, you, you can you can get them online with no fee. You can also get tickets at the Wareham Elks, and that's uh, 2855 on Cranberry Highway in Wareham. Saturday, October 5th. Doors open at 7. Starts at 8 p.m. Also got Sarah Martin hosting and Casey Crawford, who was just on Jimmy Kimmel last year. Um, he will be on the show uh, as well as myself and Edouard. Wow. So only for $20, you only get for, to see everybody. Only for $20, you get to see everybody. You get to see five. Kick booty comedians Kick booty on comedians. one show on a Saturday night for just twenty bucks. What's your act going to consist of? Do you we will get see. a taste? Oh, you you just like oh you don't want you don't want to spoil. It's, it's just like it's, being a comic is the only one. You can't go to a paramedic just like before you save this man. <laughs> I want a little taste. Uh, just a little, <laughs> hey. Give me a little preview. Uh, it's just like all that you will get to see. On the 20th. Oh, okay, my friend. More. All right. Well, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having um, me. And all right. So you know where to find him on the 28th. Tw uh, the 5th. 25th. Oct October 5th. October 5th. Um, it's a Saturday. Yep. At the Elks. And tickets are on sale starting this Friday. Starting this Friday. August 9th. All right. And if you want to reach out to him, he's so easy to find. AJ Hotpenny. Yes, you, you can uh, you can find me, AJ Hotpenny, all the social medias, Facebook, Twitter, Pornhub, just all the social medias oh. you can find. And um, and if, if you don't like me, just look up Mike Fahey. <laughs> all right. So you can find him there and you can reach out to him yourself. With that, this concludes our morning show. This show will be rebroadcasted this evening at 6 p.m., if you missed us this morning. Rather than that, we'll be back on Friday with more. And I thank you so much, Wayham, for joining us this morning. Have a pleasant day. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>